and welcome to Property Summits, the must-watch show for property investors and developers alike. I'm Emma Birchley, and with me today are five experts at the top of their game. Now, first off, we have Ranjan Bhattacharya. He's an investor, YouTuber, mentor, and all-round authority when it comes to the world of property. So too is Nicholas Woolwork, a seasoned property developer, investor, and author, as well as being co-founder of wealthlabs.co.uk. Now, Richard Bush joins us too, a man who turned a personal interest in crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending into a professional passion, co-founding Crowdlords. Also, here is John Howard, who's bought and sold more than 4,000 houses, apartments and developments in the UK. And last, but most certainly not least, is Dave Ford. He's had 40 years in the construction business. He's a chartered construction manager, a property consultant and a developer. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. So we have got an interesting one today, modern methods of construction. And Dave, you are the man for this because you've been in the building industry for a long time. Yeah, I've been around a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, just a bit. <laughs> what many, does it mean, years? How modern? Years? How many years have you had? 40 years. 40 years, yeah. But um, let's make it easy. Let's call it MMC because it's a mouthful, modern methods of construction. When most people think of MMC, the first thing that pops into the head is modular. And that's where you'd get a modular container that's built for living that is plonked on top of another one, another one, another one. That's not the case. There's many forms of MMC. You've got, it'd probably be easier to describe it as off-site construction. So it's items that are constructed in a factory off-site and delivered to site in one. Now that could be as small as um, a precast concrete staircase. It could be a bathroom pod. It could be, I've got a friend, he does loft conversions and he's been doing it 20 years. Doesn't do the conversions anymore. Just opens up the roof. Plonk something on. Plonks in the entire loft extension. Wow, you know, that's in, clever. In one day. So it just comes on a lorry with a crane. You have a banksman there, it's up, down, dropped in. Um, wow. And then, it, you've got things like sit panels, which are structural insulated panels, which slot in a frame. So you build the external frame, but now you've got load bearing ones of them as well. So you don't need the frame. And we can then go further into the smaller items. For example, you could even call really air source heat pumps, modern methods of construction. Um, the alternative to that is infrared heating as well. These are all modern methods of construction. But um, I don't want to take up the whole show. No, so you're, right. doing, you're doing very well at it. Yeah. <laughs> John, John's met his match. <coughs> really? Yeah, listen, I, the, the, I, the, I, I know a tiny bit about construction compared to Dave, that's for sure. But what I would say, Dave, on all that stuff, is all very well, and everyone wants to build things quickly, but they want to build them economically as well. And what we've found, I've found so far anyway, is that... All these, all these methods are more expensive than the traditional method. And their argument, well, they take less time. Well, they do, but they're still too expensive, as I see it. Now, maybe I'm, you know, that will change, presumably, as more and more people have them built. But at the moment, I think they're too expensive. Why are we, they we more don't see expensive? That. We don't see that, John. And when we look at, when we compare um, projects that we're offered to finance, mm. and, and their, their SIPs panels, typically at the moment, they're very common compared to brick and, you know, block, mm. that one, they are a lot quicker. Yes, I agree. That's and uh, two, the end product is much more efficient in terms of, you know, yeah. energy and so yeah. on. Uh, so so the, the cost is justified. You know, the end product sells at a higher, at a higher uh, level. See, in our experience, I'm, I'm sorry, but you've got to factor in the opportunity cost, John. Yeah, but I'm sorry. To and say, the finance cost. To say, finance you'll cost. Get, say you can get a valuer to value a property that's built by modern methods, for more money I didn't than the traditional that. one is wrong. I didn't say that. What did you say then? You said to get a value at value it, I'd say it will sell for more. Well, there it is needs to sell for more because <clears throat> it's cost you more to build. Yes, it does. What, what are the life? So what's the point then? Da I hope David will know this. What, what's the lifespan of these panels compared to, you know, brick, yeah. air gap, you know, traditional block work? Uh, I've heard them differing between 50 years and 100 year lifespans. It's even 100 years isn't that exciting, is it? I mean, 50 years, I wouldn't, you're going to struggle oh. to. Bear, um, you'll bear obviously in, finance it for the yeah, first time. Bear in mind, my house but, is 700 years old. Is that yeah, stupid? 
I mean, mind you, they, prob the they probably, not at all, but they probably, <laughs> are, it's very drafty. Um, but, you know, bear in mind when they built that, they thought it would probably only last 100 years or 50 years. And the BRE, the British uh, Research Establishment, want 60 year mm -hmm. life. That's what they go for, 60 year life. But you think you can replace a window, but you can't replace a whole wall, can you? <laughs> it's, not, it's not a panel. Easily. No, no, not surely. easily. That's the just one aspect of, of uh, off-site construction, the uh, SIB panels. There are other sort of methods as well, you know, traditional timber frame and all of that. But the other thing you need to look at is that um, I think fashion and taste and the way people mm -hmm. live yeah. in housing yeah. is changing all the time. And if you look at, say, 1930s houses to now, people don't want multiple little rooms and a front sitting room. They want more open plan. Who knows what those tastes will be um, later on. Um, I think the, the, the other thing about um, whether you build using off-site or on-site, it, it depends. Every situation is completely different. Um, we've got a, a, a project uh, where we've got a block, block of flats, and we've actually worked with a specialist company. Uh, to, it's a flat roof to basically build an extra floor and bring it in a crane and, and stick it on the top. And the main reason for doing that is because uh, there are 20 leaseholders in the, in, the, in the flats and they don't want 18 months worth of disruption while all that malarkey is going on. Good point. You know? yeah. And it's very, very easy to bring that in. And also with, say, um, London developments, many city developments, um, you are building in infill plots. So actually storage of wet materials yeah, is actually right. a difficult issue Good on point. site. Yeah. And to have the thing constructed off site mm. And you're just doing groundworks, you know, that's it. That's your messy bit. And then you're bringing all this thing in on a crane and it's just there and in uh, is a massive uh, mm. benefit. In London. In Tell particular. us about time yeah. frames, actually, Dave. That's an interesting point. So you, between uh, traditional construction yeah. methods and some kind of modular approach. OK, so anyone undertaking any form of project is governed by three things, right? Time, cost, quality. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, I'm working with a company at the moment and we're doing um, closed timber frame insulated panel systems. We're building houses, build slab, get services in, comes flat pack, it is up with roof on, windows in, doors in, internal walls, floors in less than two days. Give over. Right. That's now, amazing. As, <laughs> as a project manager myself, I know the two things that are more than likely to cause me delays, more than anything, are accidents and poor quality doing reworks. If I've got my entire house coming on a flatbed lorry, I haven't got 50 blokes there on scaffolding with the risk of accidents, mm. etc. I haven't got, I've got zero risk of quality issues because it all comes quality assured from the factory. Therefore, I can build in volume and have consistent quality, right? Now, what would you rather do? Would you rather pay another 10 grand per house as a developer, knowing there's no problems and you can sell them like that? Right. You can have them turnkey, you can have them decorated, if that's what you want. Or would you rather have to run gangs of men with big, long supply chains, material price rises, quality issues, weather, weather and all that. Okay, I understand all that. You tell me this then. Why do, why do no major house builders in the UK build, really build, have taken on the, on the modular or whatever you want to call it? The, the, yeah. The, 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 they haven't. There's got to be a good reason for right. that. The MNC. building in industry is very, very resistant to change. Not just you, John. Right, very resistant. <laughs> and also, they've got a market share <clears throat> and there's a lot of these um, ca new companies, like the one I'm talking about, they come from Bosnia. You know, the, the big boys want to keep their share of the market. They, they do. don't like change. They will have no choice. Regulations will change. Like, we're building to A, E, P, C. Yeah. Wow. Right. So those houses will be A. Right. So top this, energy efficiency. Yes. That's ama <laughs> that is amazing. I yes, agree that's that. what we're building. People will change or they will be left behind. They will lose market share and they will never get it back. There will always be a place for traditional building, always, but MMC will be the way forward. And that's the entire construction industry has decided that. It worries one the, me, oh sorry, Randy. One of the big issues that's, that's preventing take up, I don't think it's the dinosaur uh, mentality. No, I think quite what, right. what, what, 
What's actually happening, <laughs> what's actually happening is financing difficulties. So I'm building 12 houses, houses right? right? And um, they're build, built in Germany. So in a traditional development finance, they, you, know, you get a release of funds and stage completion. So how is a bank or a lender going to fund a company in Germany or Poland making um, these things entirely off-site? What happens if they go bust and all of that? There may be a few products out there, but it's much more um, restrictive, the financing options, than a traditional build. But that just requires a change, doesn't it? In the yes. way that you, they do the monthly in, the interim well, reports, as you do it, what's been done in the factory, not what's on site. It just but needs but the funder but, to but, but adapt. Richard, there's, there's absolutely no trust with these banks, and, and you can understand it. There's no trust. They're not going to fork out 50% of the, of the bill cost to some company in Bosnia or wherever it might be. No. It's fine for the social housing side of things, Dave, and I don't know if these are social houses you're doing, where, you know, um, I would like... It's not right to say money's no object, but we're all funding it as taxpayers, by the way. Um, that's slightly different, I think, than, than some of the major house builders and how they, get, how they fund yeah. their deal. But actually, and most how we fund our deals on a smaller basis. I agree, but most of the people watching this will be smaller yep. developers. They won't yep. be the, the, t the large five if they're watching. Large you know, ten. Like, large ten. So are there ten? There's ten major house builders. Okay, that, this isn't for them. No. But if you're building, it could be a single house, it could be five houses, it could be ten houses, yes. it could be five flats. Yep. You can do that using the modern methods of construction. If you can get the funding sorted. Yeah, but I think but you can get the funding sorted because they would the typically be sure. built in the UK. You would do that with a UK factory. You wouldn't do that. Exactly. A UK factory. And guess what a UK factory costs? A lot more to build the things than it does in Bosnia. Yeah, it, would, it does, yeah. yeah. Presumably as time you don't have to changes, transport it, funding either. will change and the... And the, the the lenders will be more open to things as it becomes more common. It's not just funding. It, it is, it depends. If you're building 100 houses, you know, uh, and then you've got phenomenal economies of scale yeah. in getting materials, yeah. which will be more so yes. than, um, you know, because we find that when we do a 20-unit scheme as opposed to a three-unit scheme, you get a lot of savings on everything that goes into the... And then it kind of tips the balance um, over using something that's modular. So I think that's one of the other reasons why the big houses, housing companies, yeah. do that. But this is very popular with self-builders. It's very popular yes. with difficult site access. And it's very popular um, with, with smaller schemes where people just want to get in and out very, very quickly or don't want to disrupt the existing occupiers on the site. What worries me a little bit, just to say, is um, jobs as well, because you said, oh, you could have had 50 workers, yeah. and then what about those workers? And So, me, me personally, I started off as a spark on the tools. I'm now management. I'm dead against all this MMC, because it's taking away highly paid, well-skilled jobs, and it's replacing them with poorly paid factory jobs. However, that's the way it's going. Are they, are they poorly paid, though? <laughs> Are, are the people that work in the factory poorly paid? Because they're still plumbers. Yeah, and they're still no, they're not. Spiders. They're not. They're not. They're not. They get trained to do a little piece of plumbing. Right, gotcha. And a little piece of electric. Yeah. And then it's all push fit now anyway. Push that in there with a couple of seals. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, obviously, well, you're going to need burst. plumbers afterwards, yeah. aren't you? You're going to need True. people to come in and oh, service you. Always. But the days, look, the, the construction industry, uh, RICS, Chart Institute of Building, REBA, they're all signed up to the net zero mm. decarbonisation of the built environment, which means less people on site because they want less trips to and from site. Yeah. That is the way oh, it is yeah. going. So it's about, it's about the transport. It, it, it's about everything, <laughs> yeah. That, that is the way it's going. So whereas, you know, a, a tradesman in London can earn £1,500 a week, you start off, do your apprenticeship, five years later you're doing that. Now you're not, you're earning 400 quid on PAYE in a factory. Yeah, but Dave, it's like in anything else, the, the jobs are changing. So if you go to one of those factories, most of the, a lot or half of the people are working in the CAD room, designing the Charles, construction Charles, and yeah, designing yeah. the process within the factory. It's just a change yeah. of the job. Until AI does the that for them. Until, and then, <laughs> and, then, and then it'll change again. You know, that's happening well, in every part of society, not just... I don't know whether I'm hanging is, out with John too much, but I just, I, I just think, how <laughs> the hell am I going to make... We did, have to, we did have lunch the other week. <laughs> how the hell am I going to make any money if I'm paying all these highly skilled people on site? Do you know site? what? To be quite honest with you, Ranjan, 
I agree with that. And also, you know, this is a we, this is a I mean, this is a business. You said in, in previous shows, uh, Nicholas, especially that you know it's a business. You've got to treat it as a business. I want to make some money. It's all very nice having a carbon neutral and having an A, a, a an, an A whatever for EPC. But do I really care if I was you being really care. hard about it? You should care. No. I shouldn't care. He sounds, like a greedy, care. he sounds like a greedy developer. Doesn't I he? shouldn't care. <laughs> because as long as, it, long as it's C, and as long as the carbon neutral things are not too bad, and, I, I, and it's within the law, you know, if you're building the your own home... The box ticked. Exactly. If you're building your own home to live in, then of course I want that. Everyone would. But the one thing I would say, Dave, is this question. What happens if there's a leak? <laughs> In your That's new, in your new modular home or whatever you want to call it, what it, what happens? Does the whole whole wall have to come down to find it? Does the whole, you know, because normally it's a lot easier with a you know a plumber in, in a traditional house. You can the floorboards or whatever you can find it and so on. What happens if there's a problem with these houses? Uh, it, it depends on what the method of construction is. Um, mm, it's not really an answer so far, is it? <laughs> no, because so, some of them, the, the, the pipes will be behind the, the panels. Others, they will be exposed as in traditional. Okay, city. so it's relatively traditional once you get it on site. It's not yeah, like... Okay. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you can build little access panels into where the junctions are. Yeah, that'll look nice. It, can, yeah. I just, can I just... <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, I just can I just say, <laughs> I, I looked at 40-odd houses that have been built in this way, modular way, uh, in Birmingham uh, a few months ago, the, the company had gone bankrupt, interestingly. The, well, the, the factory had gone bankrupt yeah. who produced it all, which that is, is very a, interesting. Yeah, that's the thing. And I went in these houses. I've never been in any of these houses ever before. And to say they're bland is an understatement. So you can literally move the wall wherever you want it. Uh, you don't got to leave the wall where it is. It's very clever. But the wall is not plastered, it's just some sort of material. You know, it really was basic. So it feels like a caravan it, material. It like honestly feels like a pre, literally a prefabulate, but yeah, prefab sort of home of the 1940s. They built very quickly because some of them are still up now, by the way. They built them very quickly for the war and so on. It really felt, it didn't feel like a home. I, yes, it was very warm and, mm. and it was yeah, very that's trendy. One type, John. Lots of people do There's like lots of different minimal, ways to do that. Very right? minimalist as well. Yeah. Most houses that are built using SIPS panels, for example, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, you would because you're an expert, but uh, Thank an you. average man on the street <laughs> wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a brick built house and a SIPS built house with, with brick panelling on it. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, all the big house builders are building Except the, more efficient. They're building the rail and um, the metal rail walling anyway, they've moved away from timber framing and a lot of the yeah. houses. Yeah. And that is as, as bad as, worse, way worse than a, a prefab. But, but they Explain whip it what you mean by that. Sorry. So um, uh, it, with all the internal walls in the house, they, they used to be built with um, t four by two timber, yeah. plasterboard, often double-sided, depending on the insulation levels and uh, acoustic properties needed. Um, and more recently, I don't know how long, 10, 15 years, metal it's um, metal stud. So you get these tracks that run along the floor yeah. and up, and it's like a little metal frame, and mm -hmm. then they plasterboard to that. Yes. Yeah. But they're very flimsy. And, 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 so, uh, and some don't even plaster. A plaster, it's just, it's dry lined or whatever and left. Yeah, you know, tape and jointed. Yeah. 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 Um, so we've been going this way yeah. already on the, on the ground. So right at the beginning, you talked about air source heat pumps. Yeah and infrared technology. Explain about that. Okay, so I think everyone's probably familiar with air source heat pumps. What infrared technology, IR, is, uh, it comes in over a film, it's five mil thick, and it goes above the, the plasterboard ceilings, under the floors, or in the walls. So in construction stage of things, yeah. yeah. Um, or you can get in these slimline panels if, if you, uh, for solid ceilings. Now, that is a very viable alternative to air source heat pumps. The running costs, they're there about, about the same. We're talking a couple of pennies either way, but the installation cost is about a third and there's zero maintenance on it. So it's in and it works. You haven't got a yearly check. You haven't got to top it up with fluid or whatever. Very, very popular in the Baltic states and Norway and it's a tried and tested technology and I can see that becoming very widely adopted. 
I know, um, Ranjan, this is something that you've already started moving into. Absolutely. I mean, it's been going in Japan and America for the last 30 years. It's relatively new in the UK. But the great advantage is when you're doing um, conversions of uh, buildings into more smaller one-bedroom, two-bedroom flats for rentals. You don't have the space for air source heat pumps. They need massive yeah. coverage space. And the pipes are much wider than a typical soil pipe. So where are you going to duct all that through? The great thing with this um, infrared system is you just put it, it, it's completely hidden behind the ceiling plasterboard. So it takes up no radiator space at all. And for because we keep all our flats to rent out, there is no expensive plumbers or anything like that because there's no goddamn moving parts. You know, if anything goes wrong, it's just a program controller, which, you know, you just take on and put back on with a couple of wires. So it's, it's, it, gives, it saves on space. It's exceptionally efficient. It helps with your EPC rating as well because, it, because the power draw is, uh, is not so much. Uh, it allows people positioning of furniture and all the rest of it because um, you don't have radiators and it doesn't take up cupboard space and ducting and it's very, very easy to maintain long going. Well, that's really interesting, actually. So it'll be, it will be interesting to see how mm. things develop with that. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you all very much Pleasure. once more. Yeah. And we'll be back next time with Property Summits. <laughs>